The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit and he, and then he gets this high top fade making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business and it's a man unit. Then you ask him, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. This the same that hated on Bernie with this same thing. I didn't want to be a movie star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asks for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good old Bukabe and look like Mr. Potato Head. There ain't none. You would have to have a range. So I'm taking them at face value. These are like, this is like Steve Harvey telling people he used to be homeless. That's my story. That's not his story. Steve Harvey was never homeless. When he, Mark Curry was touring with him 25 years ago, he was making $3,000 a show in cash and doing five shows a week. They, they just tell the stories. This, my, thanks to my wife, I'm where I am. You said that about the first wife. You forget that? You told us it was her, then you went and married somebody else that think like a man. Okay, so Steve Harvey had took a little quick shot at the Cat Williams Shannon Sharp interview. Let's check out this little quick audio clip. I got this from Comedy Hype. After the clip, I'll post what Steve Harvey had put on Twitter. So let's check it out right here. Hold up, Tommy. Hold up, Tommy. So you a comedian, <laughs> you a radio host, uh -oh. yes. and now you got a game show? I'm finna go on Shannon Sharp show and accuse you of you stealing my damn for real. I thought you were supposed to go on there and enlighten people. Okay, so that's what Steve Harvey had to say. As you can see what he said on Twitter as well, you know, he's just pretty much just saying that, you know, hey, haters gonna hate. Don't even respond to him. So that's what Steve Harvey had to say. I also got Bernie Mac's daughter. She responded to the Cat Williams interview as well because her father was mentioned in the interview when Cat Williams had said this. They came to me. I was supposed to be the fourth king. I got the offer. Then what happened? But I turned it down. So why? Because you shit on Bernie. And I know the truth. You think I'm going to let you shit on Bernie and then come get me? I'm the next king? Fuck you. Why? Because the whole time Bernie was here, you was acting like you was funnier than him. The reason you was supposed to go last is because it was your tour. Tell the truth. It was Steve's tour. Not it was going to be called the Kings of Comedy. It was Steve's tour. These are the guys opening for him. Of course you got to close if it's your tour. That's why it was such a big deal. But you couldn't do it because you can't beat the best. And until you humble yourself, you will forever be kinged by the king. And because you finally did it, because you didn't have no other choice, and now that he gone, you gonna act like, he wanted to be a movie star. You stop it. You stop it. That man was funnier than all. Okay, and so Bernie Mac's daughter, she said she was getting a lot of people hitting her up about the interview, and this is her response. Let's check it out Be right sure here. to hit that like button for me if you haven't already. That helps this YouTube channel continue to grow. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, stay up to date with all of my current YouTube videos. Peace. Here's a video. So I keep getting uh, lots of contact about my thoughts on the uh, Cat Williams interview on Club Shay Shay, the interview heard around the world. <laughs> and I don't know, my it, my take is probably going to be really, really boring. Um, number one, I want people to keep in mind, my dad has been dead for 15 years, so I have not been fully immersed in the world of comedy. I don't know the ins and outs of that like that anymore because my end has been gone for 15 years you know i've got friends in the game but we don't sit and talk about you know stuff like that so you know, i don't know cat williams uh never met him that's one person i never did get to meet when my dad was alive but from everything that i've ever heard my dad you know say he's always seemed like a stand-up dude so i have no qualms no quarrels with him um i thought the interview was hilarious entertaining that man dropped so many uh one-liners that i'm sure we are going to be wearing down to the ground in this year of our lord 2024 but um i one of my biggest takeaways in, in watching people's responses was how people were kind of like oh that's kind of sad like outside of being you know tickled by it and i've seen people say stuff like it's like watching you know your uncles go at it and you're like oh why can't we all just get along well i mean because everybody doesn't get along like i think that's one of the mis 
misconceptions about comedians and I guess it's due to the fact that what they do brings so much joy to others that the perception the expectation is that behind closed doors everybody gets along everybody just it's just it's in love and no it's not it's they've always been competitive like I it's always been um as far as I've ever witnessed in watching my dad it's always been um kind of cutthroat like you'll have you know people beefing like same as in within your family just because y'all related don't mean y'all all get along right it's comedy's no different um but for me cat williams has my utmost appreciation and respect for giving my dad his props and his flowers and i felt like it was genuine there are some people who have given you know my dad his flowers now that he's dead that i'm looking at like and you know doggone well he wasn't doing it when he was alive and that not just famous people just people all across the board as my dad used to say you ever want to be loved by everybody you ever want to be special just die it's real easy to give lip service when somebody dies and you oh they were so wonderful and that's not how you felt when they were alive but when cat spoke of my dad for me i felt his heart i felt that it was genuine and i appreciated um again it's been 15 years since my dad's been dead if you follow me at all you know i've said this repeatedly like it does my heart good to know that my dad was a stand-up guy that the man that i knew him to be was who he actually was to people because that's the thing like we can love people and think they one way and then find out later no and i say like in 15 years if he was an asshole somebody by now would have been like eh, let me tell you about that my love so <laughs> that that is not the case with my dad makes me so proud and i just really appreciate what i believe the genuine love and respect that cat williams showed my father it is so much appreciated much love and mad props cat williams i would love to sit down and just have a conversation with cat williams because i think that is probably be mo the most entertaining and gym dropping conversation i probably would have in my life <laughs> outside of conversations with my dad so yeah so that's my take like i said probably boring but that's what i thought again much love and respect to cat williams okay guys that's it for today's video didn't want to hold you guys too long man just want to give you guys a clips and keep you guys updated with everything, man. Salute if you made this far in the video. I really do appreciate that. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe up as well if you're new to the channel. Catch you guys on the next video, and we out, guys. Peace.